going to hell for this. No, really. Today we're going to investigate one of the final pre-time skip destinations of One Piece, the government prison of Impel Down. There's a lot that can be said about the incredible prison, but as always on this channel, I want to use this to try and comprehend the design of the architecture and how feasible would an underwater structure like this be. So, what's the world government up to over Me? there? Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. The narrative that introduces Impel Down is pretty simple. Luffy is enraged after hearing that his brother Ace had been handed over to the world government, slated for execution, and was imprisoned at the Alcatraz-esque Impel Down. Rather than a prison complex situated on an island, Impel Down is a submerged tower that rests on the ocean floor and just surfaces to form the third corner of the world government stronghold. Narratively, uh, Impel Down is a relatively short saga that follows Luffy in his descent to the lowest levels of the Dante's Inferno-styled hell-like prison, and as he progresses, going down each successive level, at times it's easy to forget that we're actually deep beneath the ocean surface, but still, the concept of a submerged tower is super interesting to me. So that's today's video, an engineering review of architecture of Impel Down. Let's start by talking about the structure as it's shown. The tower is generally cylindrical in shape and wedding cakes down each of the seven-ish levels that start with the exposed level zero and proceeds downwards levels one through six and even adding a level five and a half for shenanigans. Now, unlike a modern building, each level isn't a typical 10 to 15 foot floor to floor height. The building is massive and cavernous, so large that it has not only a forest of blood-stained knife-like trees, but also a frozen tundra and a lava pit with a cauldron. It's a, it's a madhouse, which makes sense. Uh, Luffy reunites with Buggy here for the first time in 500 chapters, as well as some of the Baroque works bounty hunters. And, and in this madhouse, uh, based on the visual cues, it looks to be made of brick, uh, masonry, or stone, something of that sort, which is pretty commonplace in the world of One Piece. It certainly adds to the architectural expression of a fortress that we might expect from a prison. But let's say the world government, or because we just love incarcerating people so much, maybe the US government approaches me to be the structural designer for Impel Down Part 2. What structural problems are we going to need to solve? Well, the first issue to address is going to be the immense pressure applied to the structure by the surrounding water, and understand that it probably needs to be treated more like a pressure vessel than anything else. So what does that mean? Well, if the past summer's submarine-related events didn't enlighten you, the water pressure gets incredibly high as you delve deeper below the surface. For every foot or meter descended, the water pressure increases linearly to equal the weight of the water above, and somewhat elegantly, that water applies the same pressure in all directions. So what can we do to analyze this effect? So like most of anime and manga, trying to scale the building to guess at how large something is will give us a widely varying results depending on the manga panel or anime shot, which makes putting hard numbers to the analysis a bit of a crapshoot, so we'll use some very round numbers. If Impel Down has six submerged levels of maybe 100 foot heights, uh, perhaps 200 foot, then we're somewhere in the range of a 1,000 foot tall building, or uh, 300 meters. And that also means a 1,000 foot deep ocean, since Impel down is depicted to be founded on the ocean floor. Now, compare that to the average depth of the oceans on Earth, which is over 12,000 feet, and it looks like the world government might have found a shallow spot. But even still, the water pressure at the base of the tower would be as high as 62,000 pounds per square foot, or 30 times the atmospheric pressure, which, crazy as this sounds, is about the same depth as the deepest ever recorded scuba dive. <laughs> no thank you. Before moving away from the discussion of water pressure, it's probably worth noting that the Impel Down design would need to account for buoyancy, or Archimedes' principle, meaning that if the tower itself didn't weigh more than the weight of the water displaced, it could actually be ripped off the ocean floor to float, requiring that the structure actually be anchored down. Now, it's hard to imagine stone floating, but consider that the engineering students across the US and Mexico compete in a concrete canoe competition each year that shows these principles in action, uh, there is math to be done. 
uh, looking closer at the design of Impel Down, it has a few interesting features. As mentioned before, it has a cylindrical shape that steps down like a wedding cake with its widest tier on the ocean floor. The circular shape would have some structural benefits, uh, generally at least, as the stress profile within the supporting walls would be more evenly distributed. Uh, that's why high pressure tanks are often in this shape, uh, not too dissimilar from the Titan vessel. Or perhaps more archaically, the Roman Pantheon, uh, which has stood for 2,000 years in the shape of a semi-sphere. There's obviously something to this. The circular or cylindrical shape distributes the applied load more efficiently than a square or rectangular tower would, where the presence of sharp corners and edges would promote stress concentrations, which make the tiered system a, a little problematic, with the roof of each tier needing to resist the weight of the water above and distribute that load accordingly. So, as the designer of Impel Down Gulf Coast Edition, it would make sense to take some cues from Oda's design, but might benefit to just make it an unesthetic tube of sorts. Moving on, for the world government's Impel Down, uh, they would have at least one less design parameter than the US government would, and that they could probably ignore significant added pressures from ocean currents, uh, given that they're located on the calm belt, though the trade-off could be offset by you know, having to deal with sea kings. Next, I don't normally talk about waterproofing, it's uh, one of my favorite things to defer to the architect, but today I'll poke at it. So if I assume Impel Down is either a brick or stone masonry, we'd need to provide some kind of waterproofing layer within the wall system. While some rock types are completely solid, uh, many have voids that could allow water to seep in, especially under the high pressure, now, not to mention the binding grout between blocks that likely has air voids as well, and even if these materials were perfect, cracks could still form in the stone due to applied loading or temperature changes. Typically, methods for applying a waterproofing layer within a wall system would be to place a plastic polymer material either in prefabricated sheets or applied like a paint. I really couldn't guess at which type would be most effective as they all have their pros and cons, but somebody would certainly need to account for it. Even then, I wouldn't expect these measures to be 100% effective. Perhaps a water pump would be required to help bail out some of the leaky structure. Luffy should be familiar. So, after mentioning this laundry list of concerns related to the design implications of a tower like Impel Down, it shouldn't be too surprising we haven't tried this yet. Uh, or have we? Now I'm not that smart, but I am smart enough to know that I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> so I googled what kind of underwater architecture even exists, and I was not all that surprised to read that there aren't many buildings of this type. The exceptions to this case are mostly in the luxury hotel or high-end restaurant vein in places like the Maldives, which is partly underwater anyways, or in Dubai, uh, the least controversial place in the world. Though there is one example of an underwater dwelling in the United States, and that's a former research laboratory turned into an Airbnb at the bottom of a lake in Florida. Sponsor the channel, I guess? The draw for these places isn't hard to see. Patrons get the opportunity to peer through the thick glass into the surrounding waters for what is probably a really unique experience. For these works of architecture, the high cost of construction for such a novel project would seem to basically require catering to a wealthy clientele. Otherwise, no owner would be willing to take the L just to be able to look some fish in the eye. So there isn't a plethora of underwater architecture, but people do build stuff, a lot of stuff, that ends up submerged below the water's surface. A lot of oil rigs or offshore platforms require anchorage to the ocean floor and often have significant engineered systems down there for fossil fuel collection. I think the Deepwater Horizon oil spill of 2010 was highlighted as an example of this, uh, in the worst way. On a better note, uh, most bridges require foundations within the body of water they cross, and a common method for constructing them is by using airtight hollow tubes called caissons to create a dry working space for builders. Now, these can be open to the air above or pneumatic, meaning uh, air pressure is raised within the caisson to push back on the water that tries to seep in as a kind of waterproofing, though you wouldn't want to use that system in a habitable building as it's known to cause a potentially deadly illness called called caisson sickness, resulting from rapidly changing the pressure on a human body. We, we actually see Cricket from the Jaya Saga experience this after coming up from a deep sea dive. I, I wonder how deep he got. Now, moving on to the final chapter of the video, obviously, Ichiro Oda isn't the only artist that has depicted underwater structures. There are dozens of projects of varying seriousness that make the rounds in architectural circles, uh, attempting to design underwater architecture. 
It's unsurprising that with the fear of climate change swallowing some of the world's most heavily inhabited lands, that architects and designers would try to provide solutions to what could be an inevitable problem. But I attribute these works of fantasy more to the power of 3D rendering tools than anything else. Maybe my brain is just too small to comprehend how something that looks like this can constitute livable space. Which is fine. In the meantime, I, I won't hold my breath. Seriously? Okay, so that wraps up my thoughts on Impel Down and how an engineer might approach such a project. If you've stuck around this far, please hit the like and subscribe button if you feel so inclined, and if anything I've mentioned has reminded you of other fictional pieces of architecture or engineering that you'd want to see a video on, leave it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Adios.